Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation uh, related with the subject fundamentals of the manufacturing process and uh, this particular presentation is based on the selection of the manufacturing processes. So, uh, the topic is selection of manufacturing processes. Uh, we have seen that there are wide variety of the processes uh, uh, like uh, casting, forming, machining, welding and uh, then you can say the property enhancing processes like heat treatment for bulk material and uh, the coatings uh, etcetera for, uh, uh, for a surface uh, property enhancement and then uh, super finishing processes, super finishing processes. Uh, since the, uh, the each process uh, works on the different approach for achieving the desired size and shape. Uh, therefore, the, the mechanical, physical and chemical properties of the material to be processed significantly affect the success of the uh, processing by a particular process or the productivity which will be associated with the particular process for achieving the desired size and shape. Uh, so, what are the factors that we need to consider when uh, a selection is to be made? Uh, and of course, what we need first, uh, there are two aspects related with the selection, one is the product features, uh, features uh, which are related with the size, shape, properties, finish, tolerance, soundness or at the acceptance level. So, the product related features are very uh, wide, but uh, as these will be determining how successfully, how effectively product can serve the purpose for which it has been made. Uh, but there is another category also which is related with the cost or the economics related with the manufacturing. So, under that only. Uh, we need to see how it is to be made so that a product can be made uh, cost effectively uh, in uh, so that it does not affect to the environment, it is economical and uh, it also serves the it, it uh, serves the purpose for which it has been made, its life is good and so that the purpose of the manufacturing as a whole can be achieved. So, if we go by the different factors which are associated uh, with the uh, selection of the manufacturing process, those which are product based and those which are operational cost or the economics based. So, if we see the shape of the final product, uh, raw material to be processed, the design requirement like features, hole slots, notches etcetera to be achieved, the dimensional and the surface properties in form of the size, thickness and the shape complexities which are to be achieved, the tolerance and the finish which is to be achieved and the properties that are needed in the components like a very high strength through weight ratio or very good surface properties, uh, uh, interior properties may not be that uh, important. So, these are the properties that uh, we need to consider uh, that we need to achieve in the product which can be made by any of the processes or by combination of the certain processes provided that uh, is achieved at a minimum possible cost and minimum harm to the environmental conditions and for that what we need to see 
how much design and tooling costs, costs are involved for making a particular product using a process because either for casting, forming, machining, welding, heat treatment and super finishing we need one or other kind of the equipment. So, if that is available the it is fine if it is not then we need to make it we need to arrange it. So, there are costs related to the design and tooling and then lead time how much time it will take uh, to get the product uh, so that uh, uh, after the placement of the order. So, that the lead time is the time which uh, uh, time which is required for getting the delivery of the product after the order is uh, placed. So, if we have that kind of luxury where long time is available or for certain big uh, customized products long uh, lead time may be as long as a uh, few months to the years also. Uh, th that this, then we have the minimizing the scrap, the volume of the production, availability of the system which is needed for manufacturing. So, these are the factors related. Uh, these are the factors which will be determining the cost at which a given product can be made and these are the features which will be governing the casting processes in order to realize these features in the product. So, here uh, we will be going uh, one by one uh, through these uh, aspects related with the processes and uh, the uh, the product features which can be achieved. So, here this is one uh, very basic diagram uh, what it uh, shows the in x axis what we have the volume of the uh, volume of the production or the number of units which are to be made is starting from 1, 10, 100, 1000, uh, 10,000 and 1 lakh and uh, on the y axis we have the temperature melting point temperature of the material to be processed. We know that the polymers will have the lower melting point temperature then metals and then ceramics. So, for the polymers it is say from the 10 to 100 and uh, then for the metals it is from say 200 to about uh, like say 2000 to 3000 degree centigrade and for ceramics about 3000 to the higher uh, temperature of say. Uh, 7000 or 8000 uh, degree centigrade. So, uh, the processes which uh, uh, will be having the lower melting point they can be easily processed uh, through the certain category of the processes those which have the higher melting point they can be processed through another category of the processes. Similarly, the processes which will be involving the lesser volume they can be made by one category of the processes those which will be involving the larger volumes they can be made by another category of the processes. So, here if we see if we try to put in this diagram uh, in the x axis we have volume uh, starting with the say here it is uh, a 0, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh in the x axis and in the y axis uh, uh, we have the melting point temperature. So, uh, this is up to the 100 then up to say 1000 then 10,000. So, for the metals this is the range, this is approximate range for the metals and at this range is for the polymers and above this it is the range say for uh, about uh, 3000 to the higher about 7000, 8000 is for ceramics. So, uh, so if we see uh, this diagram uh, the, the machining processes are good for the smaller volumes uh, like say this is the rough band for the 
machining processes, for joining processes uh, it is uh, slightly longer. This is for the joining processes, joining, machining and uh, the primary forming and the deformation based processes. Uh, so, here uh, the deformation based processes uh, this is the band for the deformation based uh, processes. Normally, they are justified for the higher volumes uh, like 1000 to the 10,000. So, uh, deformation based uh, processes. So, here it will be involving like rolling, forging, extrusion etcetera, joining will be involving like arc welding and the machining. So, we can see uh, for if the final size and shape of the product is to be achieved only through the machining then the volumes are limited, for limited volume this can be done. But for even for the harder material and uh, if the joining is to be done uh, uh, to get the desired size and shape then the volumes are pretty large and uh, you can say it, it can be used for the, the metal systems um, or the systems having the moderate range of the melting point temperature like say 200 to 1000 or 1500 degree centigrade. And then for the deformation based processes uh, like hot forming or hot uh, uh, deformation based processes can be used for even higher uh, melting point temperature uh, metals, uh, but these are justified only for the uh, high uh, for high volume productions. So, here uh, if we see uh, 10, 100, 1000, forming 1000. Okay. So, we can adjust this uh, scale little bit on the higher side. So, here um, this is 10 like 100, 1000, 10,000 and 1 lakh like this. So, volume of production. So, uh, high volume uh, processes are the deformation based processes for moderate range it is joining and for the very low volume it is uh, machining. Primary forming processes like uh, the casting uh, this is good for um, the narrow range of uh, the melting uh, point as well as uh, like this. So, this is the band for the primary forming or the casting based processes. So, not too high melting point and not too low or not very high uh, um, uh, the volumes uh, for which it can be used. So, if we see this one, uh, this is the primary, uh, this is the joining, this is uh, the material removal and this is the primary forming process and this is the deformation based processes. So, um, for the low melting point systems and uh, for joining, so this is how we can say the selection is based on here. So, the properties are basically the melting point and the volume of the production. These are the two things that uh, govern the economics as well as the properties of the material uh, help in deciding the the processes uh, to be used for uh, uh, manufacturing a product. So, if we see uh, uh, the casting wise, the casting processes are normally selected for the low melting point metals and for moderate volumes. Uh, then uh, the machining processes, these are selected for uh, mostly all formed 
and cast products are subjected to the machining primarily for achieving the finish and the tolerance. Primary shaping is not much uh, done using the machining and if it is to be done then very limited volumes uh, are used uh, for production purpose of the machining otherwise mostly machining is used as a secondary uh, processing. So, tolerance and then forming processes, forming processes are used for the low yield strength and the high ductility metals and for the high volume production when the volumes to be made are very large then only this high volume uh, production processes based on the forming are justified and the welding is used when uh, uh, welding is used when the desired size and shape cannot be achieved through the primary forming or uh, primary shaping processes like casting and forming and uh, in that case we try to uh, use uh, welding or joining processes so that the simpler shapes can be brought together to get uh, the desired size and shape. Uh, but thereafter uh, frequently the machining is uh, carried out uh, for uh, achieving the desired finish and the tolerance in even in case of the welded joints. So, uh, according to the batch size if the product is to be made then there are three uh, options uh, like the small batch size requires the flexible manufacturing processes like machining which can be used for producing the variety of the geometrical features while the large batch size allows the use of the primary forming and the deformation based processes uh, in order to offset the relatively high cost of the machining and tool. So, the primary forming processes uh, will be used like say from the 75 number of the units to be made and onwards the deformation based processes will be used for more than 1000 and the machining based processes maximum up to. Um, the 500 because it is not very economical to achieve that primary shape using the machining. Now, based on the work piece material as I have said the material uh, of the low melting point metals they are preferred to be processed through the casting route and metals of the low yield strength and high ductility metals are preferred to be processed through the uh, the formation or deformation based processes, uh, but is still in each of the category we will see that certain unique features are there which are uh, which will be guiding us to uh, uh, which will be forcing us to select a particular kind of the process. Uh, for example, the metals and most of the alloys related to the metals they have the high melting point temperature. So, they can be processed in the solid form using the machining or the deformation processes because this will be making the melting of the metals difficult and for there are certain difficult to machine materials which are which cannot be machined because of the high hardness then they require the they offer the poor machinability using the conventional processes and therefore, advanced manufacturing processes are used for processing of the, those metallic systems. So, uh, the metals like uh, uh, like composites, ceramics uh, uh, which uh, uncertain metal systems like titanium alloys and super alloys having the these are the difficult to machine materials by the conventional processes. So, it is preferred that uh, the advanced manufacturing processes AMPs are used for them and there are number of advanced manufacturing processes like ultrasonic processes, ultrasonic machining, electric discharge machining, electrochemical machining. Uh, 
water jet machining. So, there are further larger more number of the uh, advanced manufacturing process and these processes in these processes uh, we are able to even remove the material in controlled way so that desired size and shape can be achieved uh, through the advanced manufacturing process. So, difficult to machine materials are further subjected to the advanced um, uh, machining processes so that the, the desired dimensions and the finish can be achieved. Uh, like the polymers, epoxy based composites, they have the low melting point and can be processed in the liquid state. Uh, some secondary processing is like uh, the machining is needed in order to achieve the desired finish and the quality and sometimes advanced manufacturing process is preferred for uh, processing the polymer matrix composites with the fibers, fillers because of their brittle behavior. So, certain um, the composite materials of the polymer base uh, can be processed using the advanced manufacturing processes, uh, but uh, uh, means especially to deal with the brittle behavior of such metal. Otherwise, mostly because of their low melting point liquid state processing of the polymers and the plastic is carried out. Now, you will see the ceramics which are usually brittle and difficult to process in solid form uh, using the conventional processes and therefore, conventional machining processes are normally not applied even the they are because of high hardness and brittleness they are difficult to uh, be processed through the formation uh, forming based processes and the joining based processes. Therefore, uh, advanced machining processes are used for uh, processing the Mm, uh, ceramic materials and therefore, a special sometimes a special process like powder metallurgy technique is used to get the desired size and shape or they can be uh, advanced manufacturing process can be used to get the desired shape and the surface quality uh, when using the ceramics. So, uh, as uh, I have said there are uh, various processes which have the different kind of the capabilities uh, for example, the castings can uh, is the fastest route to get the uh, complex shapes, but very thin sections cannot be made. Uh, the forming is a uh, is the best method for making the simpler cross sections, simpler shapes at very high rate uh, uh, provided the volumes to be produced are high. So, the forming will be good for those processes and the machining is good for uh, achieving the desired dimensional control and desired surface finish. Uh, the welding is used for uh, fabrication of the products which otherwise cannot be made by other manufacturing processes. Uh, so, the welding or the joining is to be used uh, uh, only under those conditions uh, primarily in those conditions where the given shape cannot be achieved by other processes. Uh, so, but each, each of the process will have certain capabilities uh, to produce certain dimensional features to produce uh, the surface properties and uh, uh, and uh, to uh, uh, offer the certain uh, the tolerance uh, which can be achieved by a given process and the kind of finish which can be achieved uh, by a given process. So, now we will see that how the surface what kind of surface roughness can be achieved by the different kind of processes and what kind of tolerance which can be achieved by the uh, given uh, uh, by the given uh, manufacturing process because uh, among the uh, the features or the properties desired in a product the roughness and the dimensional uh, control over the proper uh, dimensional control um, of the product is important which affects the functionality and the performance of the product and that is why uh, we will be seeing uh, one by one the kind of roughness first, first of all we will be talking about the roughness and thereafter we will see the tolerance which can be achieved by the different processes. So, starting with the uh, roughness. So, if you see the casting processes in the casting process as cast component uh, uh, here uh, what we can see uh, this is uh, uh, like uh, the casting process have the die casting, investment casting and sand casting. So, what we can see the range of roughness which can be achieved. So, the first uh, uh, here we can see 1 to 2 is the roughness R A in micrometer uh, for die casting. Similarly, for investment casting roughness is 1.5 to 3 
uh, in micrometer R A in micrometer. So, here now you will see the sand casting offers the poor surface finish as the roughness is high in range of the 12 to the 25 uh, value, uh, uh, but the die casting offers quite good surface finish uh, which is in the range of 1 to 2 micrometer. If you see uh, the machining processes boring offers the good finish uh, ranging from 0.5 to 6 and uh, similarly most of the processes we can see the turning 0.5 to 6 and uh, the shaping 0.5 to 1.5 to the 12. So, it is we can say here 0 0.5 to 25 is the micrometer roughness in RA which can be achieved by the different machining processes. So, uh, this is uh, the, this kind of machining processes are mainly used for achieving the desired uh, shape and size. Uh, for finishing purpose, we may use uh, another category of the processes which are like abrasive processes. Uh, on the other hand, if we see uh, the grinding processes offers very close, uh, very good surface finish uh, ranging from 0.1 to 2 micrometer and uh, the honing 0.1 to 1, lapping 0.05 to 0.5, polishing 0.1 to 0.5 and super finishing 0.02 to 0.3. So, very good surface finish can be achieved through the abrasive based processes, especially the super finishing processes. On the other hand, if you see thermal cutting, thermal cutting offers very rough surfaces like 5 to 25. RA flame cutting offers 12 to 25 and plasma are cutting offers 12 to 25. So, very rough cut surfaces are produced by the thermal cutting methods. If we see the deformation based processes, cold rolling offers the good finish in range of 1 to 3 micrometer, uh, cold extrusion offers 1 to 4 micrometer. In comparison to the cold rolling, hot rolling offers the poor rough uh, surface finish and uh, roughness is in the order of uh, 12 to 25 and uh, reason for this is that when the material is processed at elevated temperature, it gets oxidized. So, that oxidation adversely affects the surface roughness of the material. So, we can see the, the casting, uh, machining, uh, abrasive based processes and thermal cutting processes each of us the different uh, kind of the surface finish and the finish which can which will be realized in a particular case that will depend upon the metal system which is being processed and the process parameters the tool condition stability and the robustness of the machine so there are various um, parameters which will be affecting the actual surface of finish which can be achieved uh, uh, during the processing by a particular process. For example, here sand casting offers the higher surface roughness as compared to the die casting. Uh, coming to the uh, another uh, uh, important feature related with the uh, important characteristics related with the uh, manufacturing processes uh, which will be determining the kind of control over the dimensions which can be achieved through a particular uh, uh, manufacturing process. For example, uh, the, the for sand casting uh, when the cast iron is processed control over the dimensions is uh, to the tune of plus minus 1.5 mm for a steels it is uh, uh, plus minus 1.5 and for aluminum uh, it is uh, plus minus 0.5 uh, I will just correct it uh, for cast iron uh, plus minus 1.3. In case of the die casting uh, the dimensional control which can be achieved is plus minus 0.12. So, very close dimensional control can be achieved here we can see in case of the die casting and which is much better as compared to the sand casting process. Then uh, coming to the machining, so machining offers the uh, dimensional control like uh, as, as per the, di the diameter or as per the size which is being processed uh, up to the 6 mm diameter uh, the, the, the dimensional control uh, is possible in the range of like say uh, plus 0 0.08 uh, mm to the minus 0 0.03 and up to say 25 mm diameter uh, this is possible uh, in the range of say plus 0 0.13 to minus uh, 0 0.05 
for milling it is plus minus 0 0.08 and for turning it is plus minus 0 0.05. So, very close dimensional control can be achieved to the turning and the milling processes. Then abrasive grinding, abrasive processes for offers uh, offer further closer control over the dimensions uh, 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 that is what we can see from the very close uh, tolerance limits. For grinding it is plus minus 0 0.08, for lapping it is 0 0.05 and for honing it is 0 0.05 and uh, uh, the non-traditional machinings offer further somewhat higher uh, the tolerance limits like for chemical machining it is 0 0.0 plus minus 0 0.08. So, we can see that the different processes have the different capability to produce uh, the, the different number of the products of the different metals having the variety of the metal systems economically. So, uh, there are certain processes which can produce uh, the low melting point metals in a smaller volume effectively there is another category of the process which can produce the high melting point metals in the larger volume. There is another category having the moderate melting point and the very large volumes which can be processed through the farming processes. So, for each kind of uh, uh, the material which is to to be processed and the volume which is to be produced they are different and according to the material to be processed and the volumes to be produced we need to select the suitable process. At the same time we can also see the each process offers the different kind of the surface finish as well as the dimensional control which can be achieved. So, in, in light of the requirement of the product which is to be made we need to select the suitable process. So, here now I will conclude. In this presentation, we have talked about the various um, technical factors which need to be considered for selection of the manufacturing process and there are two categories of the parameters which we need to be which we need to consider. One is the uh, category of the uh, features which are needed in the product to be manufactured and another is related with the uh, cost or the economics. So, uh, considering both the factors, uh, we need to select uh, the suitable process so that the desired product can be made uh, cost effectively uh, without harming the environment and, uh, the, and the entire manufacturing system is effective. Thank you for your attention.